In this video, we're gonna level up your mobile landscape photography. Now I would say there's gonna be five tips, but there's gonna be a lot more than just five. So it's gonna be worth sticking around. Now I'm teaming up with Adobe to bring you a series of tutorials, this one being focused on the Lightroom mobile camera. A lot of us don't even know that Lightroom Mobile has a pro-level camera that has so many features. It also shoots DNG RAW, but let me not get ahead of myself. I'm gonna take a seat. We're gonna download Lightroom Mobile. Why am I taking a seat? Because I can, and because I'm getting kinda old. So Lightroom Mobile is completely free. It does have some premium features, but today we're gonna focus just on everything that comes along with it, which is a pro-level editor, pro-level camera, all sorts of great stuff. The other great thing about it is that all the things that we're gonna be demonstrating work on both Android and Apple devices, including the raw DNG function. So jump into your app store and go ahead and type in Lightroom. It is this app that you see here. Now it's labeled as Adobe Lightroom Photo Editor for search purposes, but when I say Lightroom Mobile, this is the app that we are referring to. Once you have it onto your device, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a widget. Now, if I swipe from the left side of my screen to the right, you'll notice that I have this widget to take a photo. The reason that I want you to set up a widget is so that it's not cumbersome. See, without the widget, I have to jump into Lightroom and then I have to go to the Lightroom camera. I want you to be able to access it from the home screen. So on iPhone, here's how you do that. We're gonna press and hold on any one of these folders or icons until they start bouncing around. Now the top left, we have a plus button. In the search widgets, we're gonna type in Lightroom. The first thing that it pulls up is this ability to take a photo. We're gonna go ahead and press add widget and it drops right into this folder screen. I'm gonna hold down on it and actually drag it left to my home screen. Now, even when my phone is locked, I can actually drag left to right, get straight to taking pictures with the Lightroom mobile camera. So make sure you have that widget set up now that it's done, let's go for a little walk and let's talk tips, techniques, and everything mobile landscape photography. So we're at Crystal Cove. There's this really cool vantage point down here on the trail that I actually want to walk out to. Funny enough, this is actually the viewpoint. I always find that the viewpoints are usually kind of the least interesting spot, but that's usually where everybody goes to take their shots. So let's go ahead and head out to this uh, vantage point. All right, so we've come down this trail. We get to this beautiful vantage point. I'm screen capturing on my device so you can see what I'm seeing from the Lightroom mobile camera. Say hi, Mikey. All right, so what I love about this scene is that we have kind of this nice foreground that leads into this cliff that drops back into the horizon. I dig it. Let's talk tips. I'm gonna separate these tips out into Lightroom mobile camera tips and then just general composition tips. So tip one, let's talk about the camera itself. What I love doing is using grids to compose my shots. So what you're gonna do is click on these three dots at the top right, go ahead and go to grids, and we're gonna choose thirds, okay? Now from here, this makes it so much easier to not only kind of compose my shot, but also to make sure things are aligned. All right, Lightroom mobile camera tip two. You'll notice I'm using the auto functionality. There's also pro and HDR, but again, let's stick to auto for right now. You can actually drag to the left with your finger or drag to the right for exposure compensation and take your exposure up or down. Now, let's talk composition tips. See, I could just take this shot right here, and we often tend to do this, where basically the horizon is going straight across the middle of the frame, as you can see from the grids. What I want you to do is two things. Number one, we don't necessarily need to shoot ultra wide on everything. You know, with our eyes, we see these grand landscapes and sometimes we try to capture too much. So what I'm gonna do is actually switch to just the standard wide angle lens. Instead of shooting this image right here, this what I would refer to as a bullseye shot with the horizon going across the center, I want you to tip the camera down or up to showcase either more the sky or more the ground or whatever it is, but to put the horizon line on one of those thirds. Next, I want you to try and find something in your foreground. I'm gonna do that by actually lowering the camera. I'm not gonna cross this rope. Let's, let's stick to the rules here. So I'm gonna lower the camera down and use this little foreground that's kind of right in front of me. And as you can see, I'm letting the horizon kind of wrap and lead around to land on that top one third or that top two third line, okay? Now, if we need to adjust our exposure from here, we totally can. I can pull it to the left a little bit 
I don't need the foreground that bright. I wanna get the highlights in the sky. And this looks absolutely awesome. I love this. Now with each shot that I shoot from the Lightroom Mobile camera, it goes directly into Lightroom Mobile and it's ready for editing. Now check out the ultra wide before versus the second shot where we're kind of getting a little bit tighter using our foreground and really allowing the foreground to lead into the horizon, showcasing the entire scene. Here's what the final image looks like after being edited in Lightroom Mobile. Let's go on now and find our next spot. All right, now this is the perfect spot for tip three. Your Lightroom Mobile camera gives you the ability to shoot raw DNG. What that means is you're gonna capture more information in the image, and this is the perfect scene for it. We refer to this as a high dynamic range scene, okay? We have bright highlights in the clouds, we have deep kind of shadows against the rocks. It's the perfect scene where we need to get more detail. So what I'm gonna do is actually flip the camera at the bottom left over to high dynamic range. You're gonna notice that at the top, it tells me now I'm shooting raw DNG, okay? So that's it for the Lightroom Mobile camera tip. Now let's talk about this composition. I'm gonna go ahead and take the walk-up shot. Now we already know not to line up horizon line right in the center like that, right? We know not to do that bullseye shot. What we haven't talked about yet is in a scene like this where there's a lot of grandeur, what I wanna do is position myself in a spot where I can shoot ultra wide, or at least as wide as your camera, your phone will let you go, and showcase all of it. So we're gonna kind of incorporate some of our grid and compositional techniques. Let's move out to this spot. I love the texture of this rock. I mean, look at how cool all this rock looks. So what I'm gonna do is find a great spot right here. Instead of going tight on a scene like this, like I don't wanna go here and kind of lose all that texture. What I wanna do is actually go ultra wide. So we're gonna to go to the ultra wide lens. We talked about when the sky is more interesting, tip your phone up and put the sky kind of reaching that bottom third line, right? When the ground is more interesting, flip it. So bring your compositional grid to the top of the horizon line. And you can even go as far as you want. I mean, these are just general ideas and rules, but you can take this however you like. It's really your subjective kind of view on this scene. So what I'm gonna do is actually kind of compose the water so it's right there at the uh, kind of top third of this image and leave just a little bit of sky in the shot. And let's do this. I might even move forward a little bit. And let me see if I like it with these rocks a little bit better or if I like it back a little bit more. And I think I like the texture a little bit more being further back. So I'm gonna get further back, showcase maybe a little bit more of this uh, right side of the beach kind of wrapping in. I don't wanna go too far because I'm gonna get people on that side. Right there is great. Now I'm gonna wait for that wave to kind of come through and I'm gonna take this shot. Now remember, you can still adjust your exposure compensation as needed, but the Lightroom camera is doing a beautiful job of making sure that all the detail is there from highlight to shadow. Now with that raw DNG captured, let me show you the potential. Now this isn't a full editing tutorial, so I'm gonna go quick. I'm gonna select one of the Visual Flow presets. So let me go ahead and go to preset. I'm just gonna choose a black and white preset here. I'm gonna go over to light, drop the exposure. Oh my goodness, it already looks crazy. I'm gonna go to effects. We're gonna stick with all the free tools here, okay? We're gonna add dehaze to get the clouds to kind of pop. And look at this. This is, this is nuts to me. Look at the before versus the after. This came off of a phone. We shot it right here inside of Lightyear Mobile and because it's already in, we can do a quick edit on it and have something that looks absolutely awesome. All right, so tip four, lens choice matters. Now, as far as the Lightyear Mobile camera, you're gonna switch lenses by clicking that little lens icon at the bottom right. The number of lenses that you have available to you are gonna depend on whatever phone model you have. So on this one, I have three lenses available, an ultra wide, a medium, and a tight lens. Now, your wide angle shots, like the one that we just did, they're for scenes that are expansive, where you wanna showcase more, you wanna exaggerate lines, we go wide angle. But your medium shots are kind of really great storytelling shots for just showcasing a certain piece of that scene. The telephoto one is one that we often forget about and this is great for close up details. See next to that wide shot, I wanna get a telephoto shot of the rock detail, especially with kind of the water and the, the surface, the texture, it would look absolutely fantastic next to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the telephoto lens now you can get close. You'll notice in a lot of my videos, I'm actually doing this. I'll actually rotate the phone 
and bring it down and I'll shoot with one hand. This is for a couple reasons. One, I get the lens closer to whatever objects that I'm shooting, right? So as you can see, the lens is much closer down here versus when it's held up. But the other thing is convenience. From a convenience standpoint, I can press the shutter release with just one hand, right? So with the phone rotated, I'm gonna find a couple spots to get in on the rock and get some of that really cool texture. You'll notice to these shots that we're not using any type of portrait mode, we're just using the standard camera, but we have a lot of depth in the image because again, we're getting really close to these rocks and we're using that telephoto lens. This is awesome, I love those images. Again, I want you to imagine once you get that wide shot, don't just think of the wide shot, think of telling an entire story. Think of what those images are gonna look like when they're maybe hung up on the wall of your home. Having a spread of images that showcase an entire scene is always gonna be more impactful and more interesting to look at. Let's go find one more. I wanna show you guys the power perspective. We already did a little bit here, but let's do one more tip. All right, we're losing our light. I wanna to get to this tip five, which you guys have already seen a glimpse of. I wanna reemphasize the power of perspective and the power of having such a small camera in the phone. You can do things with this camera that you can't do with any dedicated setup. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just take this shot right here, and it's not a bad shot, I just want you to see the difference. This is just a standing walk-up shot of the scene. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and reverse the phone. We're using the wide-angle lens auto mode inside of Lightroom. I'm gonna go ahead and bring down the camera right to the surface where the water's coming in. All right, so that last photo is awesome and it's completely different from that standing shot. So I hope you all have enjoyed this tutorial. I want you guys to realize the power of this device that you hold in your hands. It's an incredibly powerful creative tool, especially when paired with the camera that's inside of Lightroom Mobile. It's an amazing camera and it brings so much capability to any device. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel. We will link up everything that we use in this video in the description. And meantime, I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.